Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode, one of my favorite companies. I've been doing business with Linode for eight years now. They're growing all over the world. They're opening data centers all over the place. Mine is in New Jersey. However, they're opening up in Canada, Australia, India, everywhere. Uh, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your app. Like I pay $20 a month. I've scaled it to 250,000 customers in a single month with just using about five to 10% of my available resources on a $20 a month account. So if you guys are looking to host something yourself, there's really no better company that I recommend than Linode. So make sure you guys check them out. The link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about fundamentals over frameworks. And uh, I've obviously done some videos about ditching this and ditching that. And a lot of that just comes from a uh, general, general frustration really with uh, the fact that I've been in this game now for 10 years, I've seen technologies come and go, and uh, the, the number, never ending you know, flow of new programmers that come into this field, I think what they don't understand is that like nothing lasts. My main point behind that was just simply focus on the fundamentals, because that's one thing that like nobody's going to be able to take away from you. The core fundamentals of React have, have sort of stayed, stayed the same with uh, unidirectional data flow and the virtual DOM and you know props and state and all that stuff. So when they introduce new ways of doing the same thing, I mean, it's not its not really a huge deal. Obviously, things move forward, but in my opinion, like, we're not really moving forward. So it's not the learning curve that bothers me. It's the fact that we have to do a bunch of rework to try to stay up to date with the latest documentation. And uh, and then there's just not a big value add there. Um, when React first came around, I was really impressed with it. I, I loved it. Uh, in fact, React has done really well for me. I, I once got a $40,000 raise to write React code. So... I think one of the things that I want to focus on myself more, especially the longer I'm in this game, is I want to focus on the technologies and the skills that people can't take away from me. I think, you know, we should be happy with the tools that we have and the ones that we choose to use. But you should always keep in mind that just like anything in life, I mean, things are not going to last. Everybody's afraid of wasting their time. So you're always going to have these people that are huge proponents of keeping things around and keeping the status quo because there's a lot of people that are not really comfortable being developers and they're not comfortable learning new things and they're not motivated to do so and uh and myself like i am not in that category i i've spent so much time learning different things and uh i, I i'm not ever content with the status quo really i, I always want to question the way we do things um, right now the entire node.js ecosystem I, i'm questioning uh I, I just don't like the direction that we're headed and I think that we're creating a lot of work for ourselves you know five years from now the best piece of advice I can give to anybody out there is to simply focus on the fundamentals the things that don't change so if you're gonna be in web development what I mean by that so yeah you definitely got to focus on the coding interviews I mean the, the things that they, they ask in coding interviews are things that they expect you to know and honestly as much as we hate them like they're things that actually make you a better programmer so in a way, like the more time you spend with that, it's probably more beneficial in the long run than something like learning the ropes of the latest hot framework. So for a lot of you guys just wondering, like, how do I just get started? I mean, for like the absolute beginner, like when I say ditch React in a lot of ways, I'm talking about experienced React developers that might be ready to move on to something else. But if you're a beginner developer, I really think you start with JavaScript. You start with lower level JavaScript. Understand how that works before you start messing with a framework like React. And then another thing, too, is there's so many websites that already have the actual project compiled and ready to go. If you're going to start off with something, just start there because then you don't have to deal with all the configuration. When you guys have questions about something, Google is always your answer, but it's not necessarily always Stack Overflow. It's really an unhelpful community for beginners. I would honestly say pick any other community besides that if you're asking, uh, if you're just getting started programming and asking questions because like toxic environments can definitely turn people off to you know, life-changing opportunities. All right, so guys, after you learn a little bit of fundamentals, I've always said you need to have some sort of passionate project. And a lot of people say, oh, if you like games, go ahead and make a game. Well, that's kind of hard for a beginner programmer. I mean, honestly, you might even want to just start in the web because, like, even if you just land there, then, like, if you never go further, then at least you get a job. But um, game programming is going to be really hard to just jump into something. And game programming typically requires resources and assets and all this other stuff. Like if I were going to go with Python, I would just simply make like a, a text-based game, just, you know, question and answer type of thing. Maybe a command line tool that automatically copies files from one spot to another. You start with small projects like that. 
And if you do like games or you like artificial intelligence, like what's stopping you from making a simple Node.js web application and then blogging about it? Make the next blog platform. If you like getting outdoors, I mean, why not try to figure out what sort of website doesn't exist, even if it's for like a local spot that you like to go to. So yeah, before this bridge used to be here, you used to have to get over to the island um, through this swamp area right here. I really like the swamp for some reason. It's one of the, the things I love the most about South Carolina. Their swamps are a little bit different, but honestly, if I had to choose one, I'd probably take a Virginia swamp just because there's no gators. Over here we have an old foundation. The uh, quarry wall that I just showed you guys is actually stone that they used to make the White House and a lot of uh, Washington buildings like the Washington Monument. But I'm assuming this is some sort of old st uh, stone cellar from a couple hundred years ago. Uh, some sort of structure was here. I remember when I first started coming out here when I was a kid, I used to find like actual cans and stuff from like the 1930s. Uh, but this uh, this island's actually been abandoned, I believe, since like the early 1900s, so well before that. But you used to be able to get all kinds of relics here, you know, a couple decades ago before they made it into an actual park. If we just focus on the fundamentals, we're we're going to be way better off. And when I when I talk about that, like as a web developer, why would you want to pigeonhole yourself into just doing client side React development, you know, with a view library? And uh, and if you find yourself comfortable in doing React, that's probably the time you need to start learning something else. Right now, Chrome has been the, you know, the de facto standard for web development. So when you're debugging your JavaScript through source maps or Ajax calls, looking at headers, MIME types, things like that, Chrome is the way to do that. But the problem is, is like if we all say, hey, Chrome is the only way to ever do that and never try any other, you know, method then we're not actually moving forward. We're actually focusing on one particular product, one particular company, and one particular way of doing something. So I think that when we challenge the status quo, that is what actually moves us forward because it also gives opportunity for new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things and, uh, and new products to emerge, you know, new companies to emerge. Where's the next Google? Where's the next Facebook? Like, are these companies really the golden children that are going to define the, this industry forever? No, probably not. So my main piece of advice is always find yourself in an uncomfortable position because once you start getting too comfortable, you're just not growing.